Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of Boss Up with Mr. Key featuring uh, your premier agent, Andre Key. And uh, today we want to talk about some things that may be relative to the current real estate market or just things that I see being out in the field as an agent. Um, lately, this year has been a different year. Um, I won't say difficult or challenging, just a different year. Um, and what I've noticed is that First, we'll start with the buyer side. Buyers have had some apprehension towards uh, purchasing. Um, sales may have gone di- down from uh, year to date. If you look at what happened last year in May, um, it, it's definitely uh, took a reduction based on what's happening now in May. And I tried to ask myself, hey, Andre, what, what are some of the things? What are some of the concerns? What's going on out there? Why is this happening? So um, I had to take some notes on this one because I just really want to make sure I grab it all. And so you may catch me looking at my notes, but I'm just trying to be prepared and, and more structured for my audience. So let's talk about it. I think I have about seven key reasons that I hear or that I sense buyers being a little nervous about purchasing or a little apprehensive, I should say. So um, the first thing is financial insecurity. Financial insecurity, what does that mean? Well, um, you may feel like I can't afford a home. Um, The payments, you know, here in Austin, Texas, uh, the cost of living is rising. Well, it's not like California or New York, maybe not even like Chicago, but the cost of living is definitely increasing. And so people are looking at what they're paying for rent versus what they'll have to pay to actually own a mortgage. Um, So that commitment of the down payment is another thing. Hey, you know, I I feel like I need to come up with X amount of dollars, then pay this monthly payment. Then I hear people complaining about property taxes on the rise affecting my payments. So financial insecurity is one of the top topics that I find uh, with people as far as not being ready to quite pull the trigger. Let's talk about number two, housing market volatility. The housing market volatility is the second thing that I've noticed. People are wondering, hey, is the market going up? Is it going down? Like, how will my investment be affected? Uh, Am I buying too high? Uh, What I hear is this is happening in the market. Everybody is losing equity. Um, I feel like the prices are going very low. So again, housing volatility is another thing that has kept people on the fence here in 2023. Um. Number three, the fear of just making the wrong decision with buying a house. Um, Again, they feel like, is this the right neighborhood? Like, will I be able to sell this house in the future? Will it appreciate for me? Will I have buyer's remorse if I purchase this property and then next year realize that, hey, this this just wasn't the right situation. I hate the house, et cetera, et cetera. So again, um, Fear of just making the wrong decision on a purchase like that. Um, We all know that buying a piece of property is probably going to be the biggest investment that most people make. We're talking uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars um, as an investment. And so, again, that is some cause for a concern. Lifestyle changes. Lifestyle changes is is another big thing. People are uncertain about what's going to happen with their job. They're hearing about certain layoffs. They're wondering if, uh, you know, hey, I, do I have to move? You know, most of my family lives on the West Coast. Um, me and my wife are thinking about having a baby. Will we need support? Like, what's going to change in my life uh, that could cause this to be a strain on on me and my family? So, again, lifestyle changes is another one that I hear. Um, Maintenance and responsibilities. I hear many people say, hey, Andre, I'm okay. Like with my rental, if something goes wrong, the landlord comes out, they come and fix it. I don't have to come out of extra expenses. I don't know how to take care of a house. Um, What happens if my AC goes out, plumbing issues, electrical? If I buy a house, I feel like I'm going to be like 
stressed out or at my max financially. So if something goes wrong, how could I afford it? Like, how can I maintenance and take care of this house? I don't want it to turn into a shack. So again, um, a maintenance and responsibility is probably the fifth one. Number six, mortgage qualification concerns. I hear it all the time. I mean, I I know I have a few collections or, hey, I I may not qualify. I I don't know if I make enough. I don't know if I, I hear that it's really tough to get a mortgage. So, again, people are uncertain about the qualifications, the mortgage qualifications. Does it match them? Can they come up with the down payment? Again, those things kind of tie into some of the other concerns, but that's concern number six. Concern number seven, lack of confidence in the real estate market as a whole. Um, You know, what's going to happen? Are we going to fall off the cliff with real estate? (laughs) Will I buy a house for 500,000 only to find that it has lost 200,000 in equity? Like, I just don't know if buying a house. So I'd rather rent and let the landlord take on that responsibility and risk. And I'll just stay comfortable right here. Uh, So, again, you have lack of confidence in the entire real estate market. And so people deal with these things as they shop on Zillow or uh, Trulia or Redfin or if they shop on my website. They deal with these things and they wonder like, hey, and by the way, AndreKeyRealEstate.com is that website. So check it out. It's pretty good. But anyway, um, so people have these concerns. And, you know, as a professional real estate agent, as a professional realtor, I have to deal with these concerns day to day, week to week, month to month. And it's important to understand how to help, first of all, get people to express the true concerns. And then second of all, help them figure out a way to potentially overcome the concern to become an owner of real estate in whatever city you in, not just Austin. Um, But let's go back. So we talked a little bit about... uh, Financial insecurity. Um, there, there's ways to to look at that. First thing is let, let's talk to a, a mortgage broker. Again, this one can go back t- to match uh, the w- other one, and we talked about uh, uncertainty about mortgage concerns. So anything that's do- dealing with the mortgage or that's dealing with your your budget or finances, first thing to do is let's talk to your trusted lender doesn't cost you. If it's a, an inquiry on your credit, it's not huge. It's not going to put you um, from a 680 or 700 credit score to a four. It's just not. So, you know, you worked hard to have good credit. Let someone pull it, let it work for you, and then use that as your shopping tool. So first things first, talk to the uh, the mortgage broker, figure out, you know, what you qualify for. And then talk to me and say, hey, Andre, can I get a house in this neighborhood? Let's look at the tax rates. Let's look at all the things that affect the mortgage. Hell, let's get a house, send it to the mortgage broker and have that broker break down. I mean, there's many terms. I call it a fee worksheet and have them break down this worksheet to show you how much a monthly payment could be with this current interest rate. Um, I don't want to speak in interest rates on the podcast because as soon as I say an interest rate, it may change the very next day or the very next week. So, I mean, just know right now we're looking at above six for interest rates. And so you want to see what that means to you. What is that? I typically ask my clients, what, what do you want to pay monthly? Now, if you tell me you want to pay fifteen hundred a month. OK, yeah, you're living in the wrong city. It's just not going to work. I mean, maybe depends on how much down payment you want to put down or if you want to live in like an apartment style condominium, like there's some options. But for the most part, fifteen hundred a month with the cost of living here just might not be doable. I mean, I don't want to kill your dreams. There may be a way, but just kind of consider that. So the first thing we want to know is per month, what can you afford? If you're on the cusp of becoming a renter versus maybe $300 away from affording a home, then what I typically do is say, okay, let's look at your expenses. Um, 
you work from home or do you go out to work? When you go out to work, do you buy your lunch or take your lunch? I mean, I remember working in corporate America. Some weeks I was spending about $50 a week. If you break that down over a month, that's 200 bucks. So if I went to Costco and maybe shopped and brought my own lunch to work, like if that was the difference between me being a renter and a homeowner, a little bit of discipline can give you some property that could pay dividends. So again, financial management and financial insecurity, it just comes with knowing realistically what you have coming in versus what you have going out. Understanding that and seeing where you can shave. And if it's you and a partner, you all have to be on the same page. Um, I don't believe in making people house poor. And what what that means is, yeah, you know, I have a house, but after I pay utilities and my mortgage, I can barely buy a hamburger. Like um, I can barely afford gas. I, I can't even take my family on a vacation. Like that type of stuff does not lend well to being a homeowner. And so I don't suggest you pushing your limits to that max. But if you can figure out a way and really break down your budget, and again, we help with that. Break down your budget and look and see if there's an opportunity to make it work, then I think it will help alleviate some of that anxiety. The other thing is housing market volatility. Um, you know, you could talk to me again, <laughs> your trusted professional, and I can show you a chart. Um, probably from the past 20 years, however far back you want to go. I think 20 is good. And let's look specifically to Austin, Texas. Now, you can look at the entire country on a macro level, but on a, a, a micro level, let's look at Austin, Texas. Um, you had some pullbacks like 07, 08, you know, and that was a different time. That was when anyone can get a loan. All you needed was a post. And the banks and the builders would give you a loan. And that didn't hold well. And a lot of people couldn't afford it, blah, blah, blah. We all kind of know that story. But um, if you look at a 20-year span and you look at it almost like a stock chart, like I'm sure everybody's probably Googled and seen some kind of stock chart or just seen a chart, you're going to see majority of an upward trend. You're going to see some pockets where it dips, but for the most part, the trend upward, or even if it's not a spike up, gradually projecting up is what you're going to see. So again, volatility is a part of every investment. Um, but what I feel and what I've seen as my time as an agent it, or just as you know an investor or a real estate professional is that the down times are never as long as the up times. I've never, and again, it's just speaking for me. I, I haven't seen a time where the market was just horrible for five, six years in a row. Just hadn't seen it. I mean, I wasn't around during the, the Great Depression. I wasn't around... I mean, during Reaganomics, whatever other event that happened throughout history, I was around during the pandemic, but, you know, that's different. But anyway, there I haven't seen a time when the market, the downtrodden years were over a longer span than the good times or the times where you saw appreciation and uh, values increasing. So again, market volatility, I mean, you're going to have some. Every year is a change in what's going on with the market. And so you can get in. And if you get in and you lose a little bit, just hold on. Hold on. It's going to turn around. It is going to turn around. I mean, that's just something, a simple old adage. What goes up must come down and vice versa. But I feel like in real estate, it goes up <laughs> fairly longer than it stays down. So that's just another thing to help people think about the market volatility. Some people say, hey, Andre, I want to wait for foreclosures. I want to wait for that. I mean, the thing about that is that, I mean, that could happen. I, that there are some success stories with buying a foreclosure, but that's a very competitive market. Um, and 
And even then, you're not guaranteeing yourself that you're buying at the very bottom. You know, if you have the uh, if everything's lining up for you to get into the market, like delaying never really works out for you. I haven't seen where a person delayed getting into the market when they had the means and they had the credit and they had everything else lined up. I just hadn't seen where it really benefited them a huge amount. You're going to have some people that's just going to stay on the sidelines forever. I mean, you know, I, I can't really speak to your own internal fears. I'm not a psychologist. But, you know, one of the things we could do is just give you facts, give you data. And you may not be data driven. You may just be a heartfelt person and you just have to feel the right instincts. You just have to feel it. So what I find out sometimes in me, like as a, on the buyer agent side, I'm not opposed to taking you out to see properties and to, you know, show you, uh, show you those things. Um, I'm open to it. It's important that you go out and you take a look, you peek and you see, you start getting the feel for going out, start getting the feel for what is possible for you in your life. Like that's important. So again, that's one of the things that I really want you to keep a focal point on. It just depends on if you are a glass half empty, a glass half full. Um, you know, people talk about layoffs that they hear in the media, but it doesn't even affect them. And from what I've seen here, in, specifically in Austin, Texas, like there are still a lot of companies, a lot of startups, a lot of people invest in their dollars here. And that means jobs. And so, you know, certain industries, you know, they may have some spurts where they're a little rocky, but like certain industries are just going to stay strong. Just like my analogy with the housing market as an investment, certain investments are going to go continue to incline versus decline at a way longer clip. So again, just kind of having that like uncertainty about your lifestyle, like it's just how you look at it. I'm, I'm, I always tell my clients, when you buy into a neighborhood, you become a homeowner. There's a different posture now. Now you have different kind of neighbors and you may even start to get in a different kind of circle. Like that energy and that vibe of feeling good may create better performance at your job, like a different level of a swag. And those things may help you increase your earning potential. I mean, you may have had a side business. Hey, I got a pressure washer. I like to pressure wash my house. Hey, people in the neighborhood seem to like me. That's my business right now. I'm pressure washing windows and siding or whatever. Like those things, you have to think about life changes in a positive aspect. Yeah, I mean, some people are like, hey, I make more than my spouse. My spouse is going through college right now. Well, guess what? Like the spouse is in school. <laughs> that means when that spouse graduates, there may be opportunity for you to increase your household income. So again, life changes can definitely, you know, if you look at it, yeah, there can be some traumatic things that can happen. But if you stay positive, there can be some great things that can happen and make buying that house feel like an incredible decision for yourself. Mortgage concerns. I mean, again, you can just go back to the first part where talking to a mortgage broker, understanding the misconceptions that you've heard all, this, all these years. Knowing that, hey, you know, is that really true? Will this happen? If Can I afford it? Do I have to put 30000 down? Can I do zero financing? Like all these things that you've heard about, like get a stamp on it and make sure that it's factual for you and the location that you're interested in. And then the one about maintenance, that's that one. <laughs> maintenance is one. Um, you know, when I bought my first house, there was no YouTube. I just had to try to figure stuff out. I laid my own laminate floor one time and I fucked up in a lot of places because I'm not a contractor and it looked easy. You know, I can put stuff together. But when you get to the corners of your wall and you realize that your house is really not perfect, it's not a perfect corner. It's not a perfect square. How do you cut that piece and what do you do? And, you know, I had to 
get a contractor to come in and fix those parts. But now, shit, you can learn anything you want on YouTube. I call it YouTube University. So, like, there's a lot of stuff. Hey, my AC unit sounds a little loud. <laughs> or there's a drip line outside of my window. What, the, what does that mean? Is that clogged? Is my lines clogged? Like, how do I prevent that? Again, talk to your agent. As an agent, I try to tell people step by step things that they could do. Um, I need to make that into a booklet so that they could have how to maintenance your home and not pay out of the wazoo. So again, you just, again, there, there's information. There's enough. We're in an information age. There is enough information out there where you can make sure you can mitigate any potential risk that you see. And so again, I hope this alleviates some of the stuff for the people that's out there listening. Um, you know, there, there's, again, there's always that internal fear that people have. And there's sometimes there is valid concerns that you should, you know, pause or pause for the cause when it comes to buying a house. You, you may have to because you just aren't at that point. But if everything is lining up, you know, why not? Why wait? Own a, a slice of your American dream in a form of real estate. So again, that that um, concludes another episode of Boss Up with Mr. Key, the real estate edition. If you feel like this hits home with you and you really want to find out more about you know, like some of the issues that's holding you back from getting the property, like, comment, subscribe, follow, reach out. Let's let's start the dialogue. I mean, everybody, there's no one size fits all. Um, everybody has different reasons, different things going on in their life. And again, you uh, very well may not be ready and that's OK. But if you are and there are some other superficial things that are holding you back, let's talk about it. Put it out on the table. Um, again, this is Andre Key. Um, <laughs> Williamson County, Travis County, Hayes County. If you're talking real estate, talk to me. <laughs> and it's a wrap.